Hello and welcome to Tech. I am Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about how to refresh a data using service principle in Power BI. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now let's get started. So actually there are almost 7 steps which you need to follow. Um, before going into this one, I just want to show you the complete demo itself. So now let's go to the first step which is create an app in Azure app registration. So right now I have logged into Azure portal.azure.com and once you logged into this one, then you will see this app registration here in the Azure services. If you didn't find that, then you can search this on the top here as app registration. If you click on that, then it will be open up a new window where this gives the list of available apps which you have and if you want to create a new app then you can click on new registration here and then you can give it a name here I am giving a name here and these are the options here which you want to select you can like for an example accounts in this organizational directory only or any Azure Active Directory multi-tenant single tenant you can select based on your need here I'm going to select the first options and nothing else I just need to click on the register here I don't want to go in depth about what are each and every function do here I just want to cover only those topic which is relevant to the refreshing of the data set so that it will be fast and easy for you to understand and if you notice here there are a couple of uh, IDs here application ID this is actually the app ID and this is object ID and this is the tenant ID. So we need the tenant ID, we need the application ID and other things also we need, I am going to cover that also. So this is the two things which you need to do and then we can copy all these two here. After that, if you notice here on the left side, you have certificates and secrets. You need to create the client certificate. So this is actually treat as a password. So you need to click on the new client secret, so click here then you need to give it a name here um, demo 2 years here the expires it contains 3 months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months so I'm going to select 24 months here and it will get expired so you need to renew uh, once this get expired so you need to click on add here a new client secret is added here and here is the main thing so the client secret means the ID is not mandatory here the main mandatory is the value of this one so once you create this one, you can see these numbers here, you need to copy and save it in a different uh, location wherever you are saving your password because once you get out of this one and if you come back again, then you may not able to see these informations. So this is really an important thing. After that, we need to give this app, the, what you are registering here, the API permissions. So you need to click on API permissions here and then by default, this is the one which you will have user.read and after that, we need to give the data set read write access in order to refresh the data in Power BI. So click on add permissions. It will open up a new window here and this will give the list of available services. Here I need to select Power BI service. And after that, I need to click on application permissions. Sorry, here the delegated permissions. And here this gives me list of available options. Right now we are refreshing the data set. So I'm selecting the data set read write all. And if you want to do for the data flow, you can also select that if you need and click here and add permission. So there are a couple of things which need admin consent. If it is there, then it will show up yes here and you will get a message box here, grant admin consent. If you are an admin, then you can click on this one. If you are not an admin, then you can just discuss with your administrator and ask them to give the access to these things so that once they do as a one time job and then you can make use of these things. Here for this one, it doesn't need to be an admin consent. So I can just go ahead, proceed with that. All right. So the first step is create an app in Azure app registration. We have done that. And the next step, what you have done here, API permission user dot read and data set dot read write all. So we have given these two also. And the third is create client secret certificate. That is also we have done. And the fourth is create Azure Active Directory group and add this client app as a member. 
So this is an important thing. Uh, the reason is because so the best practice is to add or share anything as using an AD group instead of sharing through a single user. So in the API section in the tenant setting also we have an option to add the AD group not as a single user. I am going to show you that in a minute. So what we need to do next now is to go to Azure here and here we need to find out Azure Active Directory. If you aren't able to see it here you can also type it here Azure Active Directory AD Azure Active Directory Azure Active Directory here if I click here then I can click on new here I have an option add user group or enterprise right so I need to click on a group here which is an Azure Active Directory group so on the left side you have this groups right this will give the list of available groups what we have and if I click here this will give the list of all the groups and here I need to select this one which is I recently created and if you want to create a new one you can just click on this one and click on the new group here it just need to give the security option it is just a security now and this is you can give it a name here description and I'm not going to change anything here and here you can add the owner and member by default those members are creating this one I'm an admin so it will add as an admin and you need to add the member here so here you need to click on no member selected it will open up a member here it will open up a new window here so that you can add a new members here so the client app which we have added right which is for the demo purpose I have added type 18 demo this is a client application which I have added which I have created right so I need to select on this one and then click on select so now this is a member I need to click on create and if I go to take 18 demo here I think it is taking a time I just refresh the browser and if I search again for take 18 yeah here is the one take 18 demo and if I go and look inside to this one this just gives this information and if I click on members this will give the list of available members inside to this one this is basically an app which is called a service principal okay so this is what we have done in the step number four and now this step number five enable all the api options in power bi tenant to this ad group which is the point number four so the ad group which we have added here is take 18 demo now let's go to power bi and here in power bi i need to go to this options settings and then the admin portal if I log into this one and then I need to click on this tenant settings and here this will give the available options which is for tenant setting and if I find it for APIs so this gives me the list of API options here the first option here allow service principal to use Power BI APIs it is enabled for the entire organization so it depends if you want to enable it for entire organization you can do that or if you want to do it for a specific group of people you can also do that here and the next option which we have here is allow service principal to use read only power bi admin apis and here the entire organization is disabled by default if you enable that it will disable by default and you need to add that particular ad group which you have created so right now what we have created here take 18 demo yeah, here is the one so i need to select on this one so now i am adding this ad group as permission for this one and inside to this ad group we have the service principle of the 18 demo so i can able to access these apis inside to that i need to click on apply here and after that other options are there if you want to enable that you can also enable those options here now the next step is add the ad group point number four as an admin of a power bi workspace so this is actually important steps which you need to follow and here if I click here and this is my workspace which is a sales workspace and then I need to go to access here of the workspace and here I need to type the take 18 demo which is here and I need to convert this as a member and then add. So right now these are the two service principles I mean AD group which I'm adding it here as an admin permission to this workspace now run the script in powershell with the required details in administrator mode this is an important thing you need to run this powershell script in administrator mode 
So what contains in this PowerShell script? This is the PowerShell script. It's just a small thing. Um, I think few of them I have covered, but even though I just want to brief about that. And here we have option like install module name Microsoft Power BI management. And you need to install this one as a one time job. And this also as a one time job. So after that, you can disable these options here. If you add an hash key, then it will be a treat as a comment, not as an exact code. So here we need to pass certain parameters, which is a tenant ID, app ID, and then app secret. And this is the group ID, which is actually the workspace name, workspace ID, and this is the data set ID. So the tenant ID, which we have got it from, um, if you are not aware of that, then if I go back to this Azure app registration, if I go Azure here and then app registration, and then if I open up the tag 18 demo, and here in our example, I'm not going to do that. It's actually a similar kind of thing. So this is, I have already created one. The tenant is common for all these things because that's the tenant. And this one might change. Uh, the client ID will change here. So this is tenant. So this is the client ID and this is a tenant ID. Right. So tenant ID is this one. You can just copy and paste it here. And the app ID is basically this one. You can just copy and paste it here. And the secret is actually about this one client secret. And if I go here, I'm not able to see. So that is the reason I want you to save it somewhere else so that you can use it on multiple purpose. So this is a client secret, which I have already added here. And how can we find this group ID and data set ID? So for this, you need to go to Power BI service and this is my workspace. And if I need to refresh this data set, I need to click here and go to settings. If I do so, if you look at in the address bar here, you can see the groups and then this is the group ID basically. And after that, the data set we have, and this is the data set ID. So I need to copy these two things and add here in the PowerShell script. Okay. And the next thing is you need to connect to a service principle. So basically you need to create a variable as a para password. And these are the static thing. You can just copy and paste. And I'm passing this secret value inside to this one and the credentials. I'm using the app ID and then the password. So I'm using this login dash power bi service account using the service principle and the credentials i'm passing it through this in the tenant id which i have added here right so once this is done it will log into power bi service and then it will pass this parameter which is actually it passed the get that power bi access token this will get it from this one and the url which i'm using it here http as api.powerbi.com and then b10 my or group and then this is a group id and the data set this is a data set id and it is refresh so invoke that rest method uri this is a url i'm going to pass here and this is the header with the access token and this is a post so once i do so i think i have not added this in a administrator mode so uh, let me add open this in administrator mode right now if you notice here it is refreshed on friday February 11 and it is opening in PowerShell. Yeah, let me open up this file here. Everything is set up here. Now if I click on run, this runs the script here. Yeah, it gives this tenant ID and it is refreshed here. Now if I go to Power BI service and refresh this to make sure whether it is refreshing it or not. Yeah, refresh in progress. If I click on refresh history via API, it means it is refreshing via API. Cool. That's it. So this is how you can able to refresh your data set in Power BI service using the service principle and PowerShell script. And these are the things which we need to follow. I'm just keeping it for a while just for you to understand what are the steps you need to follow. If you like this video, just click on the big thumbs up button. If you want me to do further investigation or something else on this topic, please let me know your feedback in the comment section below. Share this video with others. And if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure you turn on the notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, just post it on the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.